good afternoon my dear juniors so today it would be a very flat didactic lecture about how to manage deep vein thrombosis so basically when we talk about treatment of deep vein thrombosis we actually talking about treatment to prevent the sequelae of deep vein thrombosis which are pulmonary embolism recurrent deep vein thrombosis and post thrombotic syndrome to prevent pulmonary embolism we solely rely on systemic anticoagulation however to prevent this post thrombotic syndrome there is a important role of active intervention that means catheter directed therapies well just quickly we'll be going through few definitions that we'll be encountering in our next 10 minutes acute deep vein thrombosis means deep vein thrombosis with symptoms less than 14 days duration early acute deep vein thrombosis duration less than 7 days duration uh, duration is less than 7 days where the chance of pulmonary embolism is maximum as the thrombus is loose proximal dvt means any deep vein thrombosis involving the popliteal or any other cranial veins Again, it is divided into two subsets, iliofemoral DVT and femoropopliteal DVT, where the demarcation point is the lower margin of common femoral vein. So, why we are di dividing deep vein thrombosis in so many categories? Because in therapeutic options of deep vein thrombosis, we have either systemic anticoagulation and endovascular thrombus removal. In endovascular thrombus removal, we have either catheter directed thrombolysis, we inject fibrinolytic agent inside the thrombus through a catheter, or we can macerate, aspirate back the thrombus through a catheter, and which is called catheter directed thrombectomy. In patients with proximal deep vein thrombosis, that means deep vein thrombosis involving popliteal or any other cranial veins, we start. Systemic anticoagulation as soon as the diagnosis or even suspicion of deep vein thrombosis is made to prevent systemic pulmonary embolism, thrombus extension, and mortality. And here, the subcutaneous low molecular weight heparin is better than intravenous unfractionated heparin because they have a faster achievement of therapeutic level and lower risk of recurrent venous thromboembolism. In acute phase, of deep vein thrombosis, where even after systemic anticoagulation, we see progression or recurrence of venous thromboembolism within seven days, or when there are conditions where we cannot give systemic anticoagulation, like in cases of GI bleed or recent intracranial surgery, intracranial hemorrhage, in those cases, we put an IVC filter to prevent pulmonary embolism. Endovascular thrombus removal is either catheter directed thrombolysis in which we inject in fibrinolytic agent inside the thrombus via infusion catheter or mechanical thrombectomy where the thrombus is fragmented, macerated, aspirated back or it can be both. It can be a combination of pharmacological and mechanical catheter directed thrombolysis that we'll be talking about in next few slides. When we talk about active interventions of different thrombosis, Two benchmark trials come into our mind. One is the Cavan trial, where patients with acute deep vein thrombosis extending above the mid thigh were included, and they did a catheter directed thrombolysis with fibrinolytic agent, where they could show a significant reduction in the occurrence of post thrombotic syndrome over two years and five years period in limbs receiving the catheter directed thrombolysis. However, another trial which is called a track trial, which has included almost more than double sample number, they divided those uh, their patients into two subsets, iliofemoral deep vein thrombosis and femoropopliteal deep vein thrombosis. In their iliofemoral subset of deep vein, acute deep vein thrombosis, they showed Pharmacomechanical catheter directed thrombolysis did not reduce the occurrence of post thrombotic syndrome in two years period. However, 
they have significantly reduced the symptoms, the signs of deep vein thrombosis. They have reduced the severity of post-thrombotic syndrome down the lane. And definitely, definitely significant improvement in the quality of life in first six months in their iliofemoral subset. However, in their femoropopletal subset, they could not find any difference in patient's outcome in the limb receiving the pharmacomechanical therapy versus the other limb. So, the candidature for therapy, active intervention in deep vein thrombosis, according to Cavan trial, it is acute deep vein thrombosis extending above the mid thigh and according to attract trial, the iliofemoral subset of acute deep vein thrombosis. However, there are few issues which are not addressed with these catheter-directed therapies. They do not prevent recurrent venous thromboembolism. And after a successful thrombolysis or thrombectomy or a combination of both, the volume of residual thrombus burden inside the vein on the final day venogram did not correlate with the occurrence of post-thrombotic syndrome. However, in attract trial in ilofemoral subset of patients, populations, they have significantly reduced the severity. The grading of post-thrombotic syndrome were significantly less. However, the occurrence was same. So there are a few recommendations who prompted our role or intervention radiology role in the setting of acute dream thrombosis. Few benchmark recommendations are 2021 European Society of Vascular Surgery and 2020 National Institute of Healthcare Excellence recommendations where they prompted the role of catheter-directed therapies in a setting of acute deep vein thrombosis. However, there are important recommendations like 2021 American College of Chest Physician and 2020 American College of Hematology. They basically relied on systemic anticoagulation or medical management of deep vein thrombosis. They reserved catheter-directed therapy to those subsets, patients with phlegmatia cerulea dolens, and in young patients with acute proximal deep vein thrombosis. So, I'll just repeat the treatment options within 24, within 14 days of symptoms of deep vein thrombosis. That means the acute phase of deep vein thrombosis, catheter-directed thrombolysis, where we insert a catheter inside the thrombosed vein. We infuse fibrinolytic agents and we lift the catheter indwelling inside the thrombosed vein overnight for thrombolysis. We monitor ACT with target time is 300 seconds. Usually the subtherapeutic level of unfractionated heparin is given. We give uh, subtherapeutic level unfractionated heparin and we keep APTT less than 50 seconds. And we keep on taking the control venograms in a stepwise manner after thrombolysis up to 24 hours to see the substantial recanalization of the thrombosed vein. In that process, if we could see any stenotic, any offending stenosis in the proximal vein, we do a balloon dilatation and we keep it dilated. So here this patient had an extensive iliofemoral deep vein thrombosis we punctured the popliteal vein. Stepwise thrombolysis was done and sub subsequent serial uh, venography venograms were taken. And finally, we could reach the patent lumen at the level of right common femoral vein, where we could also get a stenotic lesion, the cause of this different thrombosis. We dilated the stenosis and the final check angiogram revealed a substantial flow established in that thrombosed vein with very minimal clot burden showing as a filling defect. So this is catheter-directed thrombolysis. However, pharmacomechanical or the combination of pharmacological and mechanical catheter-directed thrombolysis has extended the therapeutic window in patients with different thrombosis. Now we can do this, which is called pharmacomechanical catheter-directed thrombolysis up to 28 days of symptoms of different thrombosis where we do the debulking of the clot in the first attempt 
and remove as much trauma as possible in a single session, followed by the catheter director thrombolysis to clear the residual clot burden. Now, in this work, we, we rely, rely on two basic machines, which is called angiojet and trellis. We all know we have seen the mechanism of action of this machine. I am not going into details of the action of that. We can do significant debulking followed by RT plays or tenecti plays to clear up the rest of the clot burden and to make the thrombosed vein open. We can also do the aspiration thrombectomy for the same reason. So, to conclude, the preferred venous access site for endovascular thrombus removal is either popliteal vein, long, or short saphenous vein. In Cavin trial, the bleeding was significant where they punctured the tibial and femoral vein. And bleeding was significantly more in elderly patients of more than 65 years of age. Pelunangioplasty or stenting at the same setting of the thrombolysis is not recommended according to ATTRACT trial. In acute iliofemoral deep thrombosis, we should not do that. However, in subacute iliofemoral deep thrombosis, POBA or only balloon dilatation of the offending vein resulted in reduction in the severity of post traumatic syndrome. As I said, we do the subtherapeutic level of anticoagulation during the thrombolysis procedure. We keep APTT less than 50 seconds. And after the procedure, we give rivaroxaban, which is as good as warfarin to prevent the recurrence of deep vein thrombosis at six months. Thank you so much.